What's up guys, John here and welcome back to John Moon Studios. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up multiple outputs inside of Contact so you can use this to export multiple stems using the Rack plugin. If you are unfamiliar of what the Rack instruments are inside of Cubase, I'm going to go ahead and tag the video right now on the top right corner of this video. Go ahead and check it out and let's get right to it. Okay, so this is a continuation of my introduction to the rack instruments inside of Cubase. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set up the 16 different outputs so you can export all of these all at once. Because the problem is since the rack instrument relies on this one stereo out to send all of the MIDI information to and output audio, we need to make sure that we have different outputs so that way when we do the export function inside of Cubase, we don't have to do it one by one because right now we only see one stereo out. And just a heads up, you do need to have Cubase, I believe it's Pro, in order to do the multiple output. If you have Cubase Elements, I don't think it has this function in it. So you got to make sure that you're using Cubase Pro. Um, if you do have Cubase Pro, then you have this multiple export function. So let's go ahead and continue with this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete this because this was a continuation of the previous video. So this is part two of that. I'm going to delete all of these instruments and I'm going to start all over because there's one crucial step that you need to do inside of contact before you can actually set up these 16 different outputs. So one thing about rack instruments is that you cannot delete them like normal instrument tracks. So if I load up an instrument track right now, just for an example, and you see I right click, there's this thing that says remove selected tracks. You can hit shift and then delete on your keyboard or you could click it and it goes away. But for rack instruments, it does not work that way. There's no way to do it. So the way that you delete rack instruments, if you don't want to use them anymore, is you have to go to the rack instrument on the right hand side here. Make sure that this tab is open go to VSTI, you're going to hit the name of the plugin here, and then you have to select no VST instrument. This is going to eliminate the folder structure it created when you first opened it. And now you can right click on VST instruments and select remove selected tracks. That's how you delete rack instruments. So make sure that you take off the VST off the rack before you delete the VST instrument because it won't let you otherwise. So let's go ahead and start all over and let me show you what I mean by setting up contact. So we're going to open up this instrument track. We're going to open up just an instance of contact so we can set this up. You have to do this before doing the rack instrument because if not, it's not going to work. So you need to make sure that you follow my order. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set up the 16 different outputs inside of contact before doing it in the rack. We're going to click right here on this contact window. We're going to click this here, which opens up the outputs when I click on it. While having this open, we're going to click on this plus sign and then you're going to select the quantity. You're going to say you want 16 tracks. So you have to, I think you have to actually drag it up with the mouse. You can't type it in 16 tracks. And the number of channels is going to be two because we want this to be in stereo and 16 Stereo tracks is all one instance of contact can handle. So you got to make sure that it's 16 and 2. Next, you're going to go to the host output is going to be the first, the stereo output. That's going to be the host output. You need to make sure that this is checked, ascending output assignment. That way it can put it in ascending order. You're going to delete any tracks that you have or any channels that you have available already because we're setting this up new. And then you're going to make this your default configuration. That way, when you open up contact again, you don't need to set this up again. So we're going to click OK. And then you should see this prompt come up. It's saved as default. And now you have your 16 different outputs. Again, you need to make sure you do this step before you go into the rack instrument. So now we can close this instance of contact. We can delete this track and now we're ready to go into the rack instruments. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the same process, open up rack instruments, go to contact, and it's going to open up and create this folder structure for you. You don't need to do anything with this folder structure. It's already created for you. Select the OK to have the MIDI come out, the MIDI, the first MIDI track come out. And now what we're going to do is we're going to set up, we have up to 16, but I'm only going to show off maybe three or four rather. So I'm going to add three more. So I'm going to call this MIDI two, and then it's going to 
automatically populated for me and I'm going to have three here. So I have four instances of these MIDI tracks, which now I'm going to feed inside of this one instance of contact. I'm going to open up the contact plugin and now I'm going to start populating it with some sounds. So let's go ahead and choose again, nothing too intensive just to kind of make sure the load speeds are quick. So let's just use this legato um, violin patch. We'll do Tina Guo cello. You can close this output, by the way. So let's just close that so we have more real estate. Let's go ahead and choose the voices of war. And then we'll choose this legato patch again. So here I have my four instruments that I'm going to use to show you how to set up these rack instruments so that you can export them all at once. And you don't have to, um, you know, export them one by one because they're only coming out of one stereo out. So the first one should be this violin. Let's go ahead and play. And as you can see, it's outputting to stereo one, which is fine. We'll set up the other channels in just a bit. Next, we have MIDI two. So it should be Tina Guo. Perfect. And it's coming out of stereo one. We have the third one, which is the chance. Yes. Right, and then the fourth one we have is this legato. Ah. This legato voice patch. So they're only coming out of stereo one, meaning if we type in some MIDI data, go into file export, there's only one channel here, meaning you'd have to solo one, solo the other, solo the other in order to get all four exports. We don't want to do that. We want to do it all at once. So let's go ahead and activate the other outputs that we have available. You're going to go into your rack instruments here. And you're going to hit this down box and you're going to hit activate outputs. Now I'm using one, two, three, and four. I'm going to turn those on. Now that those are on, I can click out and I'm going to open contact again. And now for each of these instruments, I'm going to go in and I'm going to go to stereo and then select two for this one, right? So this is one. This is going to be my second output. This is going to be output number three. And then this is going to be output number four. So you see why it's important to set up these stereo outs inside of contact before you go in and you do this step. Because the thing is, if you don't have it set up, then when you go into the outputs here, you're not going to see these stereo outputs if you don't have it set up in contact first. So you got to make sure you follow the order. So now that we have these four stereo outs available inside of um, the track here, and we have them set up inside of the, the plugin itself. So each of them corresponding to their MIDI channels and outputs. So one, one, two, two, three, three, and four, four. Now, when we play each instance, you're going to see this one coming out of stereo out one, this one coming out of stereo out two, this one coming out of stereo out three, and this one coming out of stereo four. Now that that's the case, let me just go ahead and record something. Just a couple of notes. They're not going to make any sense, but let's go ahead and record something. That way we can see that we can export now each of these um, without having to do it one by one. So I'm just going to go and record some weird stuff. Here we go. Cool. So we have our track. It's completely done. Now we're going to go into the mixing session. And now we want to bounce these into audio tracks. So the way we do it is we go to file, we go to export, audio mix down. And then for Cubase Pro users, you do have this selection. Um, I do believe that the elements are, I think, artist series. I don't remember which one it is. They don't have this multiple. So you would, you would only have to do it through a single track, unfortunately. But for the Pro users, we have the multiple output selection, export selection, sorry. So now what we're going to do is we're going to deselect stereo and we're only going to select the outputs of each of these contact instruments. Make sure that here you do create audio track. That way they can just import right back into the project. And now let's see what happens. Oh, we got to select our range. So select the range. There it is. And now we're ready. So Cubase is going to do its thing. It's going to export the four tracks all at the same time without having to solo each of them and do it one by one. Click OK. Boom, it populates it into here. So now what we could do is we can actually mute these stereo out so that the MIDI doesn't play. And now we have the four stereo outs. Here's the first one. 
Here's the second one. Here's the fourth one. And then here is the fourth one. I think I said fourth for the last one. Uh, but this was the third. This is the fourth one. And you see that I've now exported all four at the same time using one instance of contact, but using multi outputs, right? So that's really the what, what's happening here. We're creating multi outputs inside of this one instance of contact. And now my computer is using less processing power in a way because we're only using one instance of contact to power these four instruments. This is also a great way to group instruments as well. So let's say you're working on an orchestral piece. You can have four instances of contact and it could be, you know, your strings, percussion, woodwinds, and then uh, brass. So by doing that, you're going to limit how many contact instances. So instead of having, I don't know, a four orchestra worth of contact uh, plugins, you can now have four in the using the four major groups of the instruments. And you can have this multi output set up. And that way, you have it a little bit more organized in their own rack folder here. So you can also put this inside of your rack folder. So if you highlight all of these, and just throw it inside your rack folder. You can keep them inside this one contact folder. Um, the only thing is you can't really rename these. Um, I've tried. If there's a way, just leave it down below in the comments. Um, but you can rename these MIDI tracks and you can also rename these stereo outs. So that's pretty much how you set up the multi outputs. And that way you can export all of these 16 tracks if you do have 16 all at once. If you have any questions throughout this video, leave your comments down below and I'll get to them as soon as possible. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the ring button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Also, don't forget to check out the John Moon Studios store. I have a variety of merch with the official John Moon Studios logo on it, so go and check that out. Down below, I'm also leaving my Patreon link for as little as a dollar a month. You can help support this channel as these videos do take time and effort to make. I would greatly appreciate the support. As always, don't forget to share with your musician friends. I'll see you guys soon.